eight of the 12 teams in the NWSL in action this weekend. It all starts on Friday as the Kansas City Current host Angel City FC. You can catch this game on CBS Sports Network. Then it's a triple header on Saturday. It starts off with North Carolina Courage hosting the Chicago Red Stars. Then Orlando Pride take on Gotham FC. And the weekend closes out on Saturday. It's a late night matchup between San Diego FC and the Houston Dash. Welcome into CBS Sports HQ. I'm your host, Lisa Roman, alongside the legendary former U.S. international, Lori Lindsay. Plenty of games to watch this weekend, none of them on Sunday. So I know how you'll be spending your Friday and Saturday, Lori. But across these matches, which is your game of the weekend? Yeah, certainly. I think you have to look towards the North Carolina-Chicago game because, listen, Lisa, we know there's fine margins in the standings and it's only telling today, not really given the full picture because of how many games left to play, how tight um, the standings are. But with the Chicago-North Carolina, I feel like this is a must-win for both of these teams. North Carolina find themselves at the bottom of the table with only 12, 10 points, actually, only 12 games played. And then Chicago dropping points against Angel City this past weekend. They've dropped a sixth place, so right on the edge of of the playoff contention. So both of these teams need a win. I think what's interesting about North Carolina, though, conceding so many goals, but they're also scoring. So how can they tighten things up defensively, but then also be able to produce with Caroline or Donez, who's leading all rookies, eight goals on the season, and then also Dabinia obviously running through. But defensively, they have to be able to clean it up. And then Chicago playing it without Mal Pugh. Last weekend, who can step up? We've seen Ava Cook do well. Griffin, who's come in off of um, a substitute off the bench. So it's going to be important for both of these teams to keep the game close and then build into what they do in terms of playing to the width, playing into service, into the box and versatile versatility in the attack for both of them. The last time North Carolina and Chicago played, it was a 2-2 draw. And Laura, as you said, these teams need to pick up points this late in the season. Would you say that North Carolina has more playoff impl implications on the line now, considering where they are in the standings, even though they haven't played as many matches? No, I'd actually go with Chicago. I think they've played despite the the losses that they'd had um, in terms of injuries, um, the ups and downs, and new coaching, different formation. I really like this Red Star team. Bright young talent. I mean, we even see them um, create a ton of chances at the end against Angel City. Just couldn't find the back of the net. I think there has to be more, more urgency when there isn't a Mal Pugh. How do they play without her? Because they've re relied a ton on her. So I think with them sitting in that sixth playoff spot um, or in six in the standings right now, I, I think the it's the onus. Is on them to get points to stay in that position um, and, and fight through the season because they've done so well. I mean, on the other side, though, North Carolina, yes, three games at hand compared to most teams. <laughs> they have a lot to play for. Um, so I don't. I definitely wouldn't say there's one more playing for the the playoffs more than another. It's just about collecting points right now because we're getting into like a serious uh, a serious time of the season, I guess you could say. It definitely is. But North Carolina, they have a few more opportunities down the line. Meanwhile, two other teams that are below the playoff line at this point, Orlando Pride and Gotham FC. This is my match of the weekend to watch because you look at a team like Gotham and they have been struggling. They've dropped their last four games in the regular season and they're just way too defensive when they step on the pitch. They're sitting back. They're letting their opponents play their game and impose it onto Gotham. They need to get more into their attacking and have that creative presence. We've seen glimpses and moments of it from Gotham, whether it's forward Midge Purse or Taylor Smith stepping into that role. And there's also been so much turnover in the Gotham front office, and perhaps that's the exact shakeup that Gotham needs. Meanwhile, Orlando Pride, undefeated in their last six games. They're only eight in the standings. And at this point in the year, Orlando is a team that can come in, play spoiler for some of these other squads and force their way into that top six standings. They need to pick up points in this match over Gotham. And Lori, this game between Gotham and Orlando, it's being played in Philadelphia at Subaru Park. So perhaps the home <laughs> field advantage not really given to either of these sides. Yeah, maybe a Gotham. We saw them play there last year as well. I think it's against the Washington Spirit. So a little bit of a um, 
easier drive, I should say, than the flight from Orlando. But still, I mean, listen, it's what we've been talking about, right? Like points are at a premium for all of these teams. There's fine margins in the standings. They have to be able to collect them. And there's a lot of back-to-back games, a lot of travel for all these teams. So it will be interesting on how teams can start to solidify how they're playing and get the results that they need. For North Carolina and Chicago, you said it. They need points. This is a huge game for both sides. So which player needs to step up in this match? Well, I don't know if she needs to step up because she has been stepping up. And it's uh, rookie Deanna Ordonez, who has been phenomenal. Just in the last three games coming off of the international break, she's had five goals, which has been just tremendous. But listen, they are conceding goals like we've never seen. They get an expansive, expansive shape when they like to attack, and they're leaking goals unnecessarily. So that's the first thing that they have to clean up. But if they're not going to and they're going to continue to leak some goals, then you have to be able to score on the other end. Deanna Ordonez has been that. And I think the one area that she's grown so much, we've known that she's been good in the air, she's good in the box, but it's her hold-up play, dropping deep, helping link others. And then when Dabinia and Caroline, now that they're back from international break, playing with Brazil as well, allows them to join in, gives them even more versatility. That's exactly what they need in the attack going into this latter part of the season. And we talked about the three games that they have in hand compared to all the other teams. So how can they collect points? Deanna Ardonias is going to be a certain player that is going to allow for, for more versatility and joining for other players to join into the attack. With the uh, Brazilian internationals, Dabinha and Caroline coming back, I, I honestly think that De, um, Diana Ordonez's game has been enhanced because of them. You mentioned yeah. all the different goals she's scoring. She has three header goals in this season. Uh, it, it's She leads all rookies with eight goals in the NWSL right now. So, Loria, I want to put you on the spot here. If Diana Ordonez scores in this match, is it with her head? Is it with her foot in the box? How is she getting her goal? Yeah, I actually think it could be it, it could be either, but I, I'm going with her uh, uh, with her head. She's been so dominant. We saw a couple of goals against Portland two weekends ago, uh, just dominant, just rising above everybody. It was excellent service. Uh, Williams on the right hand side, good delivery throughout that game, and just powerful. And I think when you're looking at this matchup against Chicago, then playing in a, a three six one essentially, if they can get beyond those wing backs and outside the three center backs, whether it's Matthias, whether it's Williams, pick it on the other side and the left, they have the capability of serving dangerous balls in. And it's just about where Don is getting on the end of those and making the most of them. Who knows? Maybe she'll rise up, become that golden boot leader at the end of this weekend. <laughs> Between Gotham and Orlando, my player to watch is rookie out of Penn State forward Carrie Abello. She's been so impressive over these last several games for Orlando Pride. She's gotten the start in the last two matches, and that's given her so much more confidence to be more deceptive on the ball. For Orlando, in their last three games with Carrie Abello, she has led the team in touches, entries into the final final third and the most important important one crosses into the box. Abello just creates these chances for her teammates. She understands that she has Maggie Doherty Howard, Darian Jenkins and Erica Timrak in the box that can just create so many chances. And she's a pest when she's off the ball defensively. Abello starts the attack and the counter press for Orlando that puts so much pressure on their opponents. So if Orlando needs to get on the board first in this match versus Gotham, it's going to come from a player like Carrie Abello, whether she's sending crosses in or she starts getting the confidence to take shots from inside the box on her own. I'm excited about this young player. I mean, the rookies in the NWSL this year, we've got Diana Ordonez, Carrie Abello, Sam Coffey with Portland. The talent that this league is going to see over the next few years is tremendous. Yeah, it, I, I agree completely. It's been fun. It's going to be a fun, uh, tight playoff uh, or race for rookie of the year, I should say, and, and who wins that. But to add Ali Watt to that, who's just traded from O.L. Reign into the Orlando Pride, I think that'll be an interesting mix up with her and Abello and how they link up really well. So it'll be fun to see this Orlando Pride, who's already starting to get into their groove, as you mentioned, Lisa, and now adding even more ability up top will be fun in terms of their goal scoring opportunities. Lots to look out for this weekend in the NWSL game split between Friday and Saturday. 
For more in the NWSL previews, recaps, analysis, and exclusive player interviews, be sure to download, follow, and subscribe to the Attacking Third podcast, a CBS Sports podcast all about the NWSL and the U.S. women's national team.